Okay, and so world equilibrium is going to be where export supply and import demand cross, right? Just like in normal markets where the supply and the demand curves cross, the world equilibrium is going to be where the export supply and the import demand cross. And this is where the world price is ultimately uh, determined. Okay, so let's return to uh, the US and France and their wine industries. And again, for simplicity, we're assuming that these are the only two countries, right? Because we want to make things as, as easy to illustrate the point as we can. So we're going to assume that the US and France are the only two countries. There's no transaction costs. There's no cost of converting currency. Everything is, is basically very uh, sort of ideal in a lot of ways. Okay, so let's do, we've got the US market. All right, here, that demand and supply, price and quantity. This is the US wine market. And I'm going to put uh, France over here. Okay, there's their market. I'm going to put their supply curve over here. Okay. And in the middle here, we've got the world market. This is, again is France wine, and this is world wine. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for the world market, we're on the world price. Okay, we've got quantity. And what we're going to see, okay, so I'm just drawing in the export supply and the import demands. So remember, this export supply curve is determined by these supplies and demand. And this import demand curve is determined by the U.S. supply and demand. Okay. And so what we've got, I'm going to switch colors to red, I guess I'll switch to blue. And if we switch to blue, what we can see is that there's going to be some world price here. And that world price continues all the way over here and determines this QD and Q. Us. And it comes right over here. And we've got QS and QD. Okay, and I'm going to put, you know, uh, let's say uh, 1, 1, and A, A. And what we know is at this world price, QD1 minus QS1. In other words, the number of imports by the US <clears throat> is going to be exactly equal to QSA minus Q, oh, messed that up, got ahead of myself, QDA, which is the number of exports by France. Okay, it's so what we have is a system for thinking about how changes in the US and French markets for wine will affect the world market and therefore each other. Okay, <clears throat> now let's so let's spend some time kind of working with this. So let's think about uh, what will happen uh, if the U.S. suddenly becomes more productive at producing wine? Okay, so if the U.S. suddenly becomes more productive at producing wine. So first off, how we would illustrate that by shifting the U.S. supply curve to the right. Okay, I'm going to put some numbers in here. Okay. Now, the U.S. is suddenly more productive at producing wine, OK? 
okay? And so the question becomes, what will this do to the United States import demand curve? Okay, so if the US suddenly becomes more productive at producing wine, so first off, we can look at this actually relatively easily. Notice that their imports are QD1 minus QS1 here, and at this same world price, their imports actually decrease. They want to buy fewer, okay? So at the same world price, they want to buy less imports, which means the import demand curve is going to shift to the left. Okay, so now we're at ID2. Okay, so notice that the new world price falls because the U.S. is buying less wine from the international market and they're producing more wine themselves. And so the new world price will come down here. And the new number of imports will be found here. And this world price will come all the way over to France, which will induce them to produce less wine themselves. And because the world price is now lower, the French people will be able to buy more wine as well. Okay, so now here's sort of an interesting puzzle. Which one is bigger? Do you think that QD1 minus QS1 <clears throat> or is it going to be QD2 minus QS2 that's bigger? And we could, I could sub these in. I could say, you know, is QSA minus QDA bigger than QDB or QSB minus QDB, right, to focus on here. Which one is going to be bigger? Well, we can turn to the world market to instantly know the answer to that question, right? That's Q1, and that's Q, we'll call it QW1 and QW2. We know that QW1 is greater than QW2, which tells us that the number of imports or exports was bigger when the world price was higher or before the supply shift, okay? Which means that we have this inequality right here. Okay, we know that the number of imports was bigger than the number was bigger before the supply curve shift than it is after the supply curve shift, even with this decrease in the world price. Okay, so we can do lots of really great stuff here just by simply noting that countries trade, they have an import demand schedule and an export supply schedule. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, let's go through, you know, one more uh, example. Okay, so we're going to do uh, one more just to sort of illustrate to you what happens, uh, just to give you some more work with this. Let's just go back to where we were. Okay, so we had the U.S. market. All right, this is U.S. wine. And we had the, uh, the French market. This is France. And then we had the world market. Misspelled world, but that's okay. That's why I'm not an English professor. <clears throat> and we had our initial world price determined by the import demand and the export supply curves. Okay. <clears throat> and let's say uh, that the people in the United States. Well, so U.S. citizens, we all want to uh, drink more wine because we feel like it makes us uh, more sophisticated. So let me finish drawing this. Okay, so we all now want to buy, you know, more wine because 
we feel like it makes us you know better people or more uh, attractive in some way or, or whatever the reason so our demand for wine uh, is going to increase okay now what's gonna happen in the world market I should finish labeling things since I harp on that in class and I should harp on it on myself okay so if that happens what happens to this market here? So the demand for the US demand for wine increases. So the question becomes what happens over here? Well, <clears throat> we can note that at this world price here, our imports that we demanded, or the quantity of imports that we demanded, were right here. And at the same world price, with our new demand curve, our imports have increased. Right? Okay, so our imports have increased, or our demand for uh, this product has increased, which means our quantity demand is increased, which means our imports are going to increase. And so if our demand for wine increases, our import demand is going to increase. Okay? which means that the world price is going to increase. Okay, and France is going to feel that world price as well. And as a result, <clears throat> the world price goes up. <clears throat> the uh, the quantity of imports, so imports by the US increase and exports by France also increase. Now one thing that you may want to notice and that you or you may have noticed and I want to point out is that we focused on changes in the supply and demand for wine in the United States. And notice how that moved the import demand curve, okay? But it did not affect at all the market for wine in France, okay? Everything stayed exactly the same. So even though French people now buy less wine, right? Now every French citizen can purchase less wine, right? Because the price of it went up okay and all the French producers are making more wine right these don't result in shifts in the curve okay so nothing in the French market changed at all which means the export supply curve didn't change okay the only thing that changed was demand in the for wine in the United States which moved the import demand curve so you can say that import demand increased, which caused an increase in the quantity of exports supplied. Okay? And over here on the previous example, okay, here the US supply of wine changed, it shifted to the right. Okay? This decreased the import demand. Okay? It did not affect the export supply. And if nothing's changing on export supply, then nothing's changing over here or conversely and more accurately nothing over in France changed right the underlying conditions people's demand the French people's demand for wine didn't change their supply for wine didn't change and so the export supply curve stayed exactly where it was okay so here the quantity of export supplied decreased because the import demand decreased and the import demand decreased because the supply of wine in the United States increased. Okay, so changes in the US market will change what French people do, but it will not change the market for wine in France at all. Okay, so changes in this do not affect, do not induce changes over here, even though it is going to induce a change in the amount of, of wine that people in France buy and the amount of wine that people in France produce. Okay, so that's a very important thing. Changes over here do not lead to changes over here, which means that the export supply curve stays exactly where it was. 
Okay, and we could do this. We could do the same analysis for the market for France. Uh, I'm going to leave that to an exercise for you to complete and think about and go through on your own and see how the export supply curve moving affects the consumption in the U.S. Okay, but again, changes over here will not changes in the curves over here. I should say will not shift curves over here, which means that they're not going to move the import demand curve. There, only the export supply curve would be moving.